building the initial pages. In this section, we're going to take a look at creating the login page, creating the signup page, building reactive and template driven forms, creating the navbar component, and building the initial chat room page layout. Creating the login form. In this video, we're going to take a look at initializing the login page component and utilizing the reactive form module for the login form. When we left off, we had just finished installing Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and start our server, if you don't have it running already. So we'll type ng serve, and I'll start our development server. Just hit enter to refresh here. So we have this button drop down here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So we'll go over to our code and open up app.component, actually .html. So here's where we entered in all that code for the button. Let's go ahead and delete that for now. Save. Great. Now if we go back over to our page, we should see nothing on the screen. So let's go ahead and generate our first component. I'm going to kill my server here with control C and we'll go ahead and type ng for the Angular CLI command. G for generate component because we want to generate a component and we want to put it into our components folder. So we'll type components slash and we're going to generate the login page. So let's type login. Actually, I take that back. Let's do pages slash login since it's actually going to be a page. And there you see, we've created our pages the login and it'll generate the login component.scss.html, the spec for testing, which we're not going to use in this tutorial, and then your .ts file. Great. So let's start our server back up again. Perfect. When we run it, nothing's going to happen because we need to come back over here and actually open up our routing. So let's go to app-routing.module.ts. We'll open that up and great. So you see here where the empty array is, that's where our routes are going to go. So we'll start off with typing path. We'll do an empty path. This will represent our root path. We'll say path match full. So we want to match that exactly. And then we're going to say we want to redirect to login, but we don't have a login page yet. So we need to create that route as well. So on the next line, type path, we'll say login, and we'll tell it the component we want to render. We'll say login component. And if you're using Visual Studio Code, that should auto import. If you're using Atom or something like that, it may not. Perfect. If we save, great. We see login works. And that's the default uh, component that was generated for us. In our pages, if we go to login.html, you'll see all there is is a paragraph that says login works. So let's go back over here and I'm going to add a couple more routes, even though we're not ready to use them just yet. We'll say path, we'll say sign up. This will be the other page we're going to have component. And right now I'm going to just make it the login component, but we'll come back and change it to the sign up component once we have one. Then finally I'll say path. And this is the wild card. So this could be anything that doesn't match a route we currently have. So in this case, we want to redirect to slash login. You could make this a 404 page or something else if you really wanted to. Great. So we'll save that. So next let's go over to login component.ts. So this is the essentially the JavaScript powering our login view. And here we're going to create a form group. So this will help us do some form validation for our login page. So we'll make it public since we're going to reference this in our view. Login form and subtype form group. You'll notice we get a red squiggly there. That's because we don't have form group imported yet. Let's go import. There's a couple things we actually want to import here. We'll say form builder, form group, and validators. We'll import those from an Angular forms. Before I forget, let's go over to app.module.ts because before we can use forms, we actually need to import the forms module. And in this case, we're going to use the reactive forms module. And we'll import that from at angular slash forms. And then we'll make sure here in our imports, we'll import it down here, reactive forms module. Now, if we save, probably going to get an error. Not yet, because we haven't rendered uh, the form in the view, but if we did, we might have some problems. So go back over to login component.ts and in our constructor, we'll type private FB and then form builder. So now we use dependency injection to include the form builder in our project here. Then we want to call a private function called this.createForm. Just so our logic isn't all crammed into one place here. We'll make a private function called createForm, which will have no return. So it'll be a void return. And then we'll say this.login form equals this dot 
fb.group. And here we can set our various fields. So we'll have an email and it'll initialize an empty string. And then here we can include validators. So what do validators do? Well, let me show you one here. So we can have validators.required. And so when we do form validation, we can ensure that this field is actually filled out. So since we have an array here, we can also add more. And so I'm also going to use one of the other built-in validators, .email. So that will verify that it's an email address. Then we can add another one and we'll say password. And here we'll do the same thing. We'll say validators.required. And we're also going to do a, another built-in validator called min length dot min length and we'll pass it eight so it'll be a minimum of eight characters for the password great so we'll save that and while we're in here let's go ahead and create the submit function so when they submit our form we'll say it's public since we're going to use in the view submit this is going to be a void return type and let's make a to do here let's say call the auth service and here we can pluck out the form fields by using some ES6 syntax. So we'll say email password will come out of the object this.loginform.value. So these values will be in our value as an object, the value of our login form as an object. And then just for the time being, we'll console log those values out. In the future, we want to call the auth service. So we'll say email. If you haven't seen this syntax before, it's ES6 uh, string interpolation. Pretty handy, so you don't have to create multiple console logs. We should be good there. Now let's move into the actual HTML. 